Hello everyone, today I have here the Jetson Axel that I purchased from Target for around $450 after tax. One of the reasons I decided to get this was because I've been seeing people riding this small electric bike and was always curious about how this small e-bike rides and performs. Therefore what's better than to give myself one to find out. Now join me as I unbox and review the Jetson Axel. Outside the box you have here the side view of how the Jetson Axel looked like in the folded and unfolded position. As you can see, this is very similar to the Jetson Bolt Pro in terms of look and size. Toward the left, you have some quick spec of the axle, which states that the axle contains a 250 watt motor with LED headlights and 12 inch airfill tires. It has twist throttle and pedal assist with a top speed of 15.5 miles per hour and a range up to 15 miles on a full charge or 30 miles with pedal assist. Now let's go ahead and open up the box. With a quick glance inside, it seemed like the bike was well packaged with bubble wrap and foam, and it doesn't look like there's any sign of damage whatsoever. Well, let's find out once we remove the bike, so let's continue with the unboxing. First off, we have this brown cardboard box. Inside this box, we have two detachable pedals. These are just your standard bike pedals with a reflector on each side. They are properly labeled, so make sure you install them on the correct side of the bike. Next, we have here the charger. This is a 42 volt, 1.5 amp charger that will charge your e-bike fully within 4 hours. It has your standard red and green light indicator to let you know the status of the charging. Next, we have here the user manual and the Jetson Care pamphlet, a wrench and an Allen key. You will need to use the wrench and the inlet key for the initial setup of the axle. That's all there is in the box. Now let's remove the bike out of the box. Keep in mind that although this bike is small, it does weigh around 40 pounds. So do be careful lifting this bike out. Inside the box, we also have the bike seat. They are a bit stiff and do not have any sort of spring suspension, so they are not the most comfortable. I would probably recommend switching these out if you want a more comfortable ride. And to no surprise, the reflector came broken. Being such a fragile part, I think this may have been avoided if the reflector was left inside the brown cover box for the consumer to install instead. Either way, I was able to fix this by super gluing it back onto the bike. Now that's all there is in the box. Let's go ahead and set up the axle now. The whole process in setting up the axle is very simple. First, we're going to remove all the foam and the bubble protection from the bike. As you can see, the handlebar just fold right up easily. On the left side, we have a spring-loaded kickstand. And let's attach the bike seat by sliding the post onto the stem tube. From there we can adjust the quick release lever and use it to clamp tightly onto the seat post. We will also go ahead and clamp the front handlebar as well. There is also this safety pin that you can slide into the lock to help prevent the lock from coming undone. Now we need to attach the pedal. Remember these pedals are labeled so make sure you put them on the correct side. Once they are on, you can tighten them up with the provided wrench. Now let's look at the handlebar. As you can see, you will need to adjust the attachments such as the reflector, bell, and handbrakes. You will do so by tightening them with your own screwdriver. The handlebar also has a quick release lever where you can adjust the angle of the handlebar to your liking. Getting on the bike for the first time, I honestly feel like the clown in the movie Saw, riding the small tricycle. Anyhow, let's continue on. Now to turn on the e-bike, all you do is press the power button, which is located on your left. On your right, you will see the battery indicator light up. One light means 1 to 25%, two light means 
26 to 50 percent three lights mean 51 to 75 percent and four lights mean 76 to 100 percent below the battery indicator you can see there is the light switch that will turn on the front headlight now if we engage the handbrake the rear brake will also come on So we're pretty much done with the setup of the Jetson axle. But before you take the bike out, I also recommend checking to make sure all the bolts are tight and that the tire pressure is up to spec. After everything is good to go, let's get the e-bike a full charge before taking it out. As you can see, the charging port is easily accessible on the left side of the e-bike. The axle in my opinion is a decent looking mini e-bike that is both suitable for kids and adults alike. The 250 hub motor is located at the rear and can easily push anyone up to 260 pounds. I weigh around 160 pounds and this bike has no trouble zooming me in and out of the neighborhood at all. The e-bike comes with two 12 inch inflated tires with dual brake system to provide you with a quiet smooth ride along with a decent braking power when you need it. The bike has a flat handlebar with the power button on the left and the light switch on the right with both handbrakes on each side. You also have the twist throttle on the right along with the front reflector and bell on the front. If you use the front headlight at night, you will see that it's bright enough to light up what's ahead of you. The brake light is also bright enough to keep you visible to others. The seat, like I mentioned before, is quite stiff and I can feel my back end hurting after 20 minutes of sitting on it. I will eventually switch the seat out. The kickstand on the other hand looks quite durable for this little e-bike and with a quick kick, it easily keeps the bike upright in a stable position. Setting up the bike to right every time is quick and easy. Once the seat has been adjusted to your preference, all you pretty much need to do is lift up the handlebar push up the latch and lock it into place. Get onto your bike, twist the throttle with automatic start, and off you go. Once you're done riding, the bike can easily be folded and put away. A few pieces of advice I would like to bring up when riding this bike is that if you're new to the twist throttle style, I would suggest starting off slow and get yourself comfortable with the throttle. Any accidental pull or twist of the throttle may cause the bike to jerk or go forward when you didn't intend to. Second advice is to keep in mind not to lean back too far and also try to keep your weight within the center of the bike. Due to the design of the e-bike and the fact that the bike is so small, a lot of your weight is distributed toward the back wheel. So if you lean back too far while the bike is moving, the front wheels may lift up and kick you off of it. As you can see here, it happened to me. I see that it's hard to control the bike when this happened because you will still most likely have your hand twisting on the throttle, causing the back wheel to spin out of control. And beside these two pieces of advice, I think we are ready for the right test. I took the bike on street roads around the neighborhood as well as the bike trail for the past couple of days. And I think the bike rides fairly well. The bike operated quietly with the exception of the normal noise coming from the motor and bike chain. The performance of the 250 watt motor was nothing to be amazed about, but I have no complaint whatsoever. I weigh 160 pounds and the bike effortlessly moved me forward while maintaining a top speed of 15 miles per hour. With these flat surfaces, especially on the bike trails, the bike glides smoothly across the pavement with no struggle whatsoever. One thing I do want to point out is that the pedal on this bike is not the easiest to use. Without the help of the motor, the amount of effort you put into pedaling alone is not worth the distance you get out of it. With that being said, the pedal is almost useless on this bike if your battery is dead. The only benefit and the main reason I see of the pedal is for the pedal assist to help you conserve the battery. A feature the Axel has is cruise control. In my opinion, the cruise control is not the friendliest to use as I find it quite hard to activate. To activate cruise control, you have to hold down the throttle for around 6 seconds while the bike is in motion and at a constant speed. I find it hard to maintain a constant speed as it will solely depend on the terrains that you're riding on. So far, I've only been able to activate cruise control when it was unintentional. I think life would be easier if Jetson just added a manual cruise control button. I tested the bike on grass terrains 
and as you can see here, the motor was barely strong enough to move me forward without any help of the pedal. Therefore, anyone heavier than I am, you may have to use the pedal to help the bike. I also decided to take the bike out to test on the dirt road, and I think it rides just like any other standard bike. The bike was quiet and fairly smooth. Without any suspension besides the 12 inch tire, I did feel the normal bumps and rocks here and there that you would on a standard bike. Overall, riding this bike on dirt road is doable and doesn't look as bad as the seat. I continue this test by taking the bike on this bridge, which I would say have an incline of around 10 degrees. As you can see for a 250 watt motor, this bike didn't have any problem taking my 160 pound weight up this bridge. The only problem that I found was that people were staring at me riding a small little rear bike. While coming down this bridge, something crazy had happened. One of my brake lines suddenly came off while I was pressing it. Luckily, I saw my other hand brake and was able to stop the bike. After a close inspection, it looked like the end of the brake line was not seated properly in the brake handle and it popped out while I was depressing it. Therefore, you make sure you inspect your brake line before riding. Come on. I rode and rode until the bike ran out of battery. I managed to get a total of 11.5 miles with little to no use of the power assist and going mostly at full speed. This was not as far as I was hoping to get but the numbers should be better with the use of pedal assist. After having the bike for a while now, I think this is a neat little bike. It rides well and doesn't have any issue besides those that I mentioned. The quality of the bike is decent and I can see this bike lasting for quite some time. However, there can be improvement on the cruise control feature along with the safety feature of the use of the twist throttle with the uneven weight distribution. Other than that, if you don't mind the way you look while riding this bike, then this is a great little e-bike to ride on. It's small enough to be put in the back of your car and I think it's perfect to be used to explore places that do not require you to have power and speed. Therefore, if you're in the market for a small e-bike, you may want to consider this one. Well that's it for the unboxing review of the Justin Axel. Like always, if you enjoy and find this video helpful, please leave a like and a comment below. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. It would definitely help support my channel and enable me to make more content like this. Well thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.